Hello and welcome. I'm going to be talking about Christmas picture books tonight. But the thing that I'm talking about with regard to these picture books that's a little bit different is that instead of just telling you about the book and recommending what I like, what I don't like reviews, I'm also going to be sharing the language arts standards that the different books um, address so that if you're a teacher or a homeschooler, then you will know which books might meet your needs as far as addressing standards, as well as um, all the wonderful things that pictures books do for children. So the first one is one I'm just going to do briefly because I actually talked about this one in the very first episode of Book Reviews for Bright Kids when I talked about some of my favorite picture books here. My husband's walking behind me to adjust my camera. It must have been tilted a little bit. I still see that the shelf looks tilted in the back. I think the, the camera sits on top of my my monitor. I think the monitor might, yeah, it's a little better. It's still, you can come around. Um, but he, he must be watching the stream on something else. So this book has absolutely, is that just ignore me? This book has absolutely beautiful illustrations. It is the Twas the Night Before Christmas, which is actually a slightly different a named poem by Clement Seymour, but um, this book is lovely. And it's just a wonderful treatise on the delightful classic. The standards that it addresses and why it's useful is that it addresses a lot of the poetry standards, which are really helpful. Hi, Leanne, thanks for joining in. Um, it addresses a lot of poetry standards. It's got strong characterization because there's a lot of description of Santa, and that's helpful in showing like, how a, an author can build a character by describing a lot of their physical characteristics. And there's a little suspense in here too. Um, you don't know what's gonna happen in multiple places throughout the story. So this is a great one for teaching all of those standards. All right, next. All right, I'm pulling no punches because this is absolutely hands down one of my top three favorite Christmas picture books. So this book is called Auntie Claus and actually I'll go back and add it in Facebook tomorrow, but in the YouTube description now, I have a link to where you can go listen, uh, you can get the audio files of me reading a bunch of Christmas stories, and this is one of them. I love it so much. Auntie Claus. The characters in it are fabulous. You can see it says Van Gammer in it. That means it's been in my classroom. Like, that's why it says Van Gammer. The illustrations are absolutely gorgeous. This book is by Elise Primavera. And Auntie Claus, there are a couple of sequels to it, like a couple follow-ups. I don't like them as well. Um, the original is the best. But it's about a family that is actually the Claus family. And the little girl who's the protagonist, Sophie, she doesn't realize who they really are, but you kind of figure it out um, pretty early on. And, it, and she ends up on the... Um, she ends up through a strange twist of fate at the North Pole where she discovers that her little brother um, is on the BB and G list, the bad boys and girls list. And it's a really sweet exploration of a family and sibling rivalry and yet love. And it's really, it's, it's a sweet, precious book. I was flipping some of the illustrations turn sideways so then you have to open it this way it's so fun there's a character in it who is so fun to read aloud this is an absolutely fabulous read aloud there's an elf at the north pole who um i can still i can still hear myself reading this oh boy oh boy like it's an adorable book absolutely adorable highly recommend it now the standards that it does are it, there's suspense in here for sure. Definitely suspense in this one. Good characterization. There's a strong moral. So if you're looking for a book that can address some of the fable standards, this will work for you. Also, it, there's dramatic irony because we know some things that the characters don't know. So it's got dramatic irony in it as well. All right. The next book you've all heard of. There's no one here who hasn't heard of this book. Polar Express. You can see our copy is trashed. Um, because not only has it been in my classroom, but I read this book out loud to my family every single new or every single Christmas Eve. Every single Christmas Eve, we read the Polar Express. So one thing I would recommend in doing read alouds is make sure that you adjust the voices. 
I don't think that the read aloud experience, and I know my husband could maybe add in the chat what he thinks, but I don't think that the read aloud experience for our family with this book would have been the same if I weren't using a strong, different voice um, for it. Teacher likes books. I'm so glad you're here. You are the winner from the one that I did in the middle of the day on Friday a couple weeks ago. And I sent your son an email and said, I don't have your mom's email. Uh, tell her that she won and to get in touch with me. So, um, and I think I commented back somewhere, but email me, email me at lisagiftaguru.com. Email me because I need to get your address so I can send you some books. I'm so glad you're here tonight. So what I mean by that, by the voices, sorry for the little tangent, but what I mean by that is you can't just read the books like as soon as we were back inside the Polar Express, right? You've got to read it as though you were acting it out. And I think when you listen to audiobooks, you realize it's less a narration as it is a performance. So I'll give you an example. In this scene where the boy chooses to get the bell and Santa holds up the bell, he says, um, when I asked, Santa smiled. Then he gave me a hug and told an elf to cut a bell from a reindeer's harness. The elf tossed it up to Santa. He stood holding the bell high above him and called out, the first gift of Christmas. Okay, my whole family will say, the first gift of Christmas, because every year they hear me do that. So you have to be willing, my husband's over here laughing, because it's true, right? It's a, you, it's a thing. You have to be willing to be a little silly. You have to be willing to go out there a little bit. So this is a fabulous read aloud, but I actually made a note to myself. Make sure to tell them to use voices. You have to use voices. All right. Why is this a good book? Good use of imagery. This will meet a lot of imagery standards. Also, there's a very strong climax. So if you're teaching plot, it's good for that. It, it shows a clear climax. Sometimes students have trouble identifying climax. This one has a clear climax. Um, and then there's, it's a, it's its own particular genre. So that's helpful. The character is interesting because he's static. He's a, a rounded character to some extent, but he's static. He doesn't change from the beginning of the story to the end, right? We're not surprised in the end where the, when the bell rings for him as it does for all who truly believe, right? We're not surprised. He's a static character. That's an unusual thing to have happen. Usually in strong stories, the protagonist is dynamic, but this character is static. Next, um, there is a strong protagonist in here, but there's also really strong supporting characters like the conductor and Santa, and that makes for a nice discussion about, um, about characterization. All right, this is one I think um, two things about. Number one, I don't think you will be as familiar with it. It's called I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day, and it is written by um, Lloyd and Carmel Newell. Now, um, Lloyd Newell is actually the conductor of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, and this book is part of their Christmas series that they have, and there's going to be another one that I'm going to share. They're absolutely fabulous. They come with a DVD so that, or a CD, I guess it's a DVD. I don't even know what it is. It's a DVD, a DVD that you can listen to, like you can see it and listen to it. This is an experience. Okay. Why do I love this book? This book, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day, is the true story of how um, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote the words to the poem, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day, that became The Beloved Carol. And it's a true story based on things that had happened in his own life. His wife, this is like Civil War era, his wife um, wearing a hoop skirt caught her dress on fire. Her dress caught on fire from the fireplace in their home and she died. And um, she was buried on their 18th wedding anniversary. And then their old, one of their oldest sons who was fighting in the Civil War was severely injured and sent back home and he was caring for him. There are some lovely illustrations to go along with this very poignant story. Um, here's one where there he is caring for his son. And it talks about how he ended up writing the, the poem. What I really love is that on a number of the pages, it will 
tell the story on one side, and then there'll be these inserts that explain more of the background and the information about it. So, and then in the back, there's information on how the poem became a song and um, the entire song. So it's a really, really beautiful book. I, I think it's underknown, one that definitely deserves to be known. And I absolutely love it. It's a little pricier, I think, because it comes with the DVD. It's one of the more expensive picture books, but definitely would make a beautiful gift and a truly lovely, lovely book. All right. A totally different feel. I'm going to recommend this book called The Christmas Mice. This book is a nice one. Oh, wait, hold on. I didn't tell you the standards. The standards for I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. Standards for days. First of all, addresses a ton of nonfiction standards. Second of all, it's got a powerful setting, uh, especially it's very anchored in its time, which is helpful. Um, and, and it helps you address your historical fiction ideas. Next, it's it also helps you address the character motivation standards, like what makes a character do what they do, and also author's purpose. There's a clear author's purpose, which sometimes is also a little bit tricky. All right. Moving on to Christmas Mice. Christmas Mice is the sweetest little book. It's very simple. This is for um, appropriate for younger children. I mean, older children will love it too. Um, it's got these sweet anthropomorphized mice, very detailed illustrations. You can see like these little, little details, but you see these letters, they're all real. So they all open up and you pull out a little letter. What's really fun is that at the end of the book, it makes the suggestion that you pull out all the letters and see if you can put them in order and put them back where they go. And so it's like an activity book in a book. Um, it's a really sweet, sweet little, little Christmas story. Um, and there's this invitation to the Christmas feast. It's sweet. It does have some standards it addresses, even though it is for younger children, conflict, nonfiction, letter writing, like how letters are structured. Also, there's some suspense and there's all these clues. And that is a nice way to address some of the standards about like um, dramatic irony, how an author builds interest in a story. Some of those more obscure standards are very clear in that one. This next book is out of print, unfortunately. You can still get used copies dirt cheap. Um, it's a little golden book called Noel. And this one is great because the story structure is, is cool. So it meets nice story structure standards, um, as well as conflict. But this sweet, sweet story is about a glass blower named Herman. And he is blowing this Christmas ornament when he gets news that his daughter has had his first grandchild. And a tear of joy finds its way into this glass ornament and the glass ornament's name is Noel and that tear becomes Noel's happiness. And the story goes through how Noel ends up in a family and everything is seen from the perspective of the ornament. So you can use it to teach your perspective standards, point of view, narration. Um, and so he's like in this family and every year he comes out and gets brought out and then after Christmas, he goes back in the attic and it's so sad, right? Um, but then there's this deeply sad part where like it talks about how Christmases go by and there is powerful standards addressed here in story structure and timeline and how an author will go slowly through one part and then speed up to cover a number of years and how that's done. And you can address author style with that. And then, um, and then what happened was the... Um, the family decides not to bother with a tree and eventually the house um, falls into disrepair, I guess this side, but then it gets purchased by a new family and they fix it up. And what's nice is this is an old book, but the new family is an African-American family who, who turned this house into something really wonderful. So then they find the ornaments in the attic and they bring them out, but Noel Noel breaks, he's old and he breaks. And so you're just going to have to read it to find out how it ends. But it's a really, really fun 
um, a fun one. One of my favorite lines in the story, it's a poignant story. It's got a very sweet message. Um, but one of the things he says, and one of the things the author says in the, in the book is nothing is ever truly over when one has a happiness. And I, I just love that story so, so much. All right. Another one, there is actually a YouTube video I recorded last year about this story, Christmas in the morning. Not only there are two stories I'm sharing that I taught the class. Like you can go watch me teach the class, but um, yeah, it looks like veggie tail. That's fine. Um, and this one, there are two things. You can watch me read the story and teach the story. So um, Christmas Day in the Morning is written by Pearl S. Buck, who wrote The Good Earth. So if you ever read the novel The Good Earth, um, she wrote this. It is the story of a young man living on a farm and he wants to show his father that he um, appreciates him and loves him. And so one Christmas Eve, what he does is he gets up in the middle of the night and goes and does all of the chores without being asked. Oh, teacher likes books. Yes. I think Mark really liked this story. Um, that's her son. So he, he talks about it's, it's how this child learns what a gift really is. And he goes out and he does the, um, does all the chores and the father who's this taciturn you know stern farmer guy just cannot believe it um and he says um it, it it's so it's so so sweet oh my gosh it's so sweet um uh, the father says oh what a christmas and how his heart had nearly burst again with shyness and pride as his father told his mother and made the younger children listen about how he, Rob, had got up all by himself. The best Christmas I ever had, and I'll remember it, son, every year on Christmas so long as I live. And then, and the father dies. So this book is told in a flashback. And so it is just a beautiful family story of the, the true meaning of gift giving and what really makes a gift. You can use it to teach standards of a dynamic character because the protagonist definitely changes, and so do some of the secondary characters. You also have a very clear prop progression in a framed story, and so you can address those standards as well, and also narration. So that one is good for a lot. So how this came about, I'll just tell you how this came about. One year, I decided to see if between Thanksgiving and Christmas vacation. So when we came back from Thanksgiving and then and, and went to Christmas vacation, had like two weeks. I wanted to see if I could teach every single one of my reading standards with picture books. And I used Christmas books. And these are what I used. And I did address every single reading standard. So the next one is The Christmas Miracle of Jonathan Toomey. So this is a fabulous, again, Van Gammer, right, from my classroom. This one also comes with the audio version of the story. Um, it's a beautiful story. Oh, the illustrations. PJ Lynch, you guys, PJ Lynch is just, there are two illustrators in here tonight who are some of my favorite children's illustrators. And PJ Lynch, look at the detail in this, just the gorgeous beauty of PJ Lynch. So this is a story of a man named Jonathan Toomey, who the villagers call Mr. Gloomy. And he, it turns out that he's sad because his wife and child have died. And this new woman, a widow, moves to town and her nativity set has been lost. She's, she needs a new one carved. And through the course of the story, Jonathan Toomey makes a very big change in his life. He's definitely a dynamic character. What's clear and what's helpful in teaching the standard is that you see this picture, this particular picture shows the climax. And one of the things that's sometimes hard in teaching climax is that climax isn't necessarily the moment where something big happens. It's the moment of greatest emotional intensity in a story. And so what's nice about this story is that you get to see that. You see that man kind of having this crisis, this his own emotional crisis and making a change. And that's sometimes difficult for kids to notice. And so this is a great book for teaching that. It's also great for teaching internal conflict. And it also shows how internal conflict can inform and influence external conflict. Um, and there's a historical setting as well, although that's not as strong, but it definitely is set in the past. I will say there's a lot more text 
than a lot of children's, yes, these illustrations. Oh, they're so beautiful. They're so realistic. Um, there's a lot more text than is normal for a lot of picture books, but it's, it's definitely worth it. Cannot say enough about the Christmas miracle of Jonathan to me. Well, you all know, um, good night moon and Margaret wise Brown has wit written, has written Margaret wise Brown has written a couple of others of my favorite, the absolute favorite books. And one of them is this Christmas story called on Christmas Eve. This book is a story about children in a family who are lying awake. They can't sleep. It's Christmas. The illustrations are not done by the same illustrator as Good Night Moon. They're very dark. They, it's probably hard to see them come through. They do remind me a little bit. The illustrations remind me a little bit of Polar Express in that like darkness with the ones that are dark. But the children in the family come down into the living room in the middle of the night because they cannot sleep. They're so excited that it's Christmas Eve and they see things. It's, it's so cool because they like see something under the tree and they're like, is that a train? And they want to know, but they don't want to know, which is like group internal conflict, which you don't really see that often. Um, so that's fun. And the children hear something. So they quickly run up the stairs and then they look out the window and carolers are coming down the street and they, they jump back into bed and try to hide. So there's some suspense there. It's mild, but it's there. You get um, some really clear in, in on Christmas Eve, you get some very clear, sorry, my ring lights making a big uh, thing there. Let me move over here. Um, you get some nice exploration of authorial style, which is sometimes also hard to teach. The inciting incident is super clear, which is helpful as well. And then there are some nice writing imitation possibilities. If you're going to have the kids write there, she uses some strong phrasing. Let me tell you what I mean. When you're going to have kids write, um, you can, it, it's sometimes great to give them a sentence as an exemplar. So in this sentence, in the big quiet house where the people were sleeping, the children got out of their beds. So then asking kids to substitute, like, you know, putting two adjectives before the noun, and then what were the people doing and using a specific verb tense, and then what happened, right? Sentence combining. So there's a lot of writing standards that you can address in there. Yeah, it, it does. the cover looks like a Christmas card. I think you're absolutely right. It really does. All right, next, this one I hesitated to recommend, The Little Match Girl. You guys are probably familiar with the story, the Hans Christian Andersen classic. Um, it's it's a really good story for understanding our responsibility to others and also um, the importance of a single person in your life, how you may feel like everyone is against you. It's very clear in the story that the grandmother is the only one who ever loved her, but that was enough for her. And I think that a lot of times our kids, especially our gifted kids, get the message that, you know, in order to be OK, you need to have this huge, huge circle of friends. And I think this book, one of the messages it has is it's OK if you just have one person like it's OK. Um, I, I will have to warn you, it's sad. This is a sad, sad story. Uh, the girl dies at the end. That is very sad, but it's got a lot of strong things in it. It's got, it's an interesting genre that we don't normally see in um, more classic stories. And that is magical realism where they're like, everything's normal except one thing isn't quite normal. Um, there is a good exploration of external conflict. There's some cultural um, standards that get addressed. It's a nice story to compare with a fable. You can address fairy tale standards if you're still teaching those. And it's got some interesting verb tense structure. So there's actually some grammar standards that are addressed in that one as well. Okay, this is the second book of the night, Silent Night, Holy Night, that is the um, Mormon Tabernacle Choir version, their Christmas thing. If you can ever find videos of their Christmas programs. You probably can find them on YouTube. They're so fabulous. Like they get amazing artists to come in. I mean, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm Mormon. So there you go. But I love, I love um, these. This one, it, it comes with the, the disc in the back and it's read by Walter Cronkite. So it's absolutely beautiful. So this is the true story of the Christmas truce that occurred during World War I where the soldiers put down their weapons and met in no man's land in between the trenches and celebrated Christmas. And it is absolutely gorgeous. I True confession, every time I do this as a read aloud, it brings me to tears. 
every time. And I've probably read it aloud to like my children and my students who are also my children over a hundred times. And yet it still brings me to tears. The illustrations are wonderful. There are um, beautiful illustrations. And at the bottom of the pages, there are, um, there are photos of World War I soldiers. At the back of the book, after the story is over, it gives some more information about the Christmas troops. I love the way that it ends. The message and moral is beautiful, which again is nice for teaching authorial intent. Um, it talks about the peace that came and it says, and that's the way it was one silent night almost a hundred years ago. And that's the way it can be as each of us embrace the message of that silent holy night. Ah, just love this story. Yes. I mean, yeah. Teacher likes books with a great and interesting lens to look at Christmas through. So fabulous. It is so, it is, it is a, a powerful story. I absolutely love this. This is one of my top fives. So, um, it's got a, a, that very lyrical ending is so, so beautiful. Make sure, um, that you get the one um, that that is this like like this this title is not that unique I you know I've got links there that you can click but just make sure you get the one narrated by Walter Cronkite. You can teach a lot of nonfiction standards with this authorial purpose. There's good pacing, strong structure, and there's a unique conflict resolution that is is fun to explore. You can do a lot of conflict with that one. The next one does conflict too. This is another one of the stories Christmas stories that I taught. The Gift of the Magi um, by O. Henry. So another classic one. And interestingly, also illustrated by P.J. Lynch. My, you know, my, she's just one of my two favorites. You'll see the other one here tonight. Um, so this is the timeless tale of the husband and wife who are so poor they can't really afford anything for each other for Christmas. And they only have two valuable possessions, his watch and her hair. So she sells her hair to buy him a watch chain and he sells his watch to buy her combs for her hair. And the, the, so obviously it is the best treatment of irony of situational irony that you could possibly have. Um, it teaches dramatic irony as well. So there's two different kinds of irony in this story because you've got the dramatic irony because the characters don't know that the other is selling, but we do. And then there's also the situational irony of the, of the premise of the story as well. There's some beautiful syntax because O. Henry had an unusual authorial style. So you can teach, address a lot of the syntax standards and you can um, do setting and also narrative voice. The narrator is very strong here. The narrator is definitely, he's not in the story, but he's speaking. And that's um, not that common to find and is interesting worth discussion. The last lines just slay me every time. Um, it says, and here I have lamely related to you the uneventful chronicle of two foolish children in a flat who most unwisely sacrificed for each other the greatest treasures of their house. But in a last word to the wise of these days, let it be said that of all who give gifts, these two were the wisest. Of all who give and receive gifts such as they are wisest everywhere. They are wisest. They are the magi. And I love that repetition. So many standards. I Yeah. So many times I go on and on. All right. This one is a newer book, Little Red Sleigh. Little Red Sleigh has just these super bright illustrations, very bright, unusually bright. I don't know if it's really coming through on the um, on the uh, screen, but the illustrations are um, more like you would see in like Little Blue Truck, like that kind, not the typical kind of soft focus um, Christmas ones. They're beautiful. They're beautiful illustrations. This book is written by Aaron um, Goindelsberger and um, I deserve like German points for saying that. I don't know if I said it correctly, but there you go. It has echoes of Polar Express. As you read it, you will, you will realize there's a little echo of it there. Um, I think that one of the things that this story does beautifully is to share that what we think is really our wish may be a little bit different and that we can't limit our wishes for ourselves, our dreams for ourselves. Little Red Sleigh is a precious, precious story. Um, the sleigh wants to go to the North Pole and she keeps getting thwarted. And 
eventually the story ends where she doesn't really get what she wants, but yet she gets something just as good. It's a sweet, sweet story. Um, there are some great standards met in this that are not met in some of the others, like alliteration, um, repetition, aphorism, internal conflict. There's the use of the subjunctive voice, which I can never find enough examples of. And that's in here. So this one actually, sweet story, lots of standards. All right, next. Woo, 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 woo. I have three left. Dasher. I love this story. This is a prequel to Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And this is a story of how a, um, how a reindeer named Dasher ends up um, it basically saving Santa from utter disaster and bringing her family who's been um, laboring in um, like a kind of like a petting zoo type place. They're in a, a traveling circus and they don't want to be there, but they're under kind of a stern taskmaster who um, doesn't really want them to run away. But um, Dasher escapes and is trying to make her way to the North Pole, which is like been presented to her as heaven because her her parents have talked about what it was like to really live there. And up until this point, Santa has been using this horse named Silverbell to um, to carry his sleigh. But now there's so many children because so many more children believe that he his sleigh is too heavy for the horse. And so Dasher comes to the rescue. All of her family ends up with them. And that's how we get Dasher Dancer, Prancer, um, Vixen, etc. Interesting. It's a, it's a really cute story. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful illustrations. Matt Tavares does a great job here. I think that you could do a really nice comparison to this and Polar Express in how Santa behaves and what are the differences compare and contrast the role of the protagonist in both stories. Um, it's got a couple of interesting standards it addresses. It's written in a large part in the second person. A lot of it's written in second person like you, and that's unusual. There is a verb tense shift that's unusual, that's fun to teach. There's a strong conflict. There are um, also multiple opportunities for things that you could identify as the inciting incident, which is kind of fun to play with because then the kids can have a discussion about what is the real inciting incident. There is that anthropomorphism of the animals that's very common in picture books and Christmas stories. The syntax is interesting and there's a lot of allusions. So you can address probably 11 standards with this one book. All right, this was the last book I had picked, but I have one more that got sent in to me. I quickly ordered it. Somebody saw that I posted I was gonna do this and they suggested a book. I ordered it that day. It came on Saturday. I read through it and I'm gonna recommend it as well. I haven't taught with it, but I'll tell you what I would do. All right, this last book that's my recommendation is by Gloria Houston, illustrated by Barbara Cooney, and it's called The Year of the Perfect Christmas Tree. I saved this for one of the last because I think this is just paperback. So it's very inexpensive. Um, you could probably buy it for, oh, it's way less than $10. The, the price on the back says $7.99. So you could probably get it for even slightly less. This book is an Appalachian Christmas story. And it has such a strong female protagonist. Now Dasher does as well because Dasher is a dope. And so that has a female protagonist as well. This is a, a human female protagonist who's super, super strong. It is so sweet. It is the story of a family who lives in Appalachia and at Christmas in their community, the community takes turns with one family getting to supply the Christmas tree for the community and the church. And it's this family's turn and um, the little girl and her dad go out and they pick the tree that they're going to chop down and they tag it. Well, then he ends up having to go off to fight in the war. This is set in World War One. He has to go off and fight in the war and he doesn't get home in time. And so she and her mom, oh, the illustrations are perfect. Like you've all read books where you see an illustration that reminds you of this. Like this is a particular style of illustration that Barbara Cooney does. It makes you feel really like it, it matches. So she and her mom go out and they go find the tree and what okay wait i left out one of my favorite parts so the um the the preacher comes to their door one night and says hey um doesn't look like you guys are going to be able to get that tree because the dad's not home yet so we found someone else 
to to provide the tree and the um and her mom is like yeah no um it's our turn and we already said we're doing it and we'll, we're doing it so the mom gets the little girl up in the middle of the night and takes her walking out let me see if i can do that to to find this tree and as they're walking they're singing all these christmas carols they're singing i wonder as i wander they're singing um all these different ones they find the tree they sing i saw three ships of sailing they the mom chops down the tree and they and she drags it to the church on a sled and then they leave it and they don't say who it was and then they hear later everybody's talking about like how did that how did that tree end up there and it is a sweet story it's got echoes of like little house on the prairie set in appalachia just a sweet idea of the idea of humility in strength and the strength of family and the idea of sacrifice for love and a, a, truly a magical magical book if you do not own this book um or if you have a child in your life who you could give this to this is a sweet story um for the standards it addresses one of the things that's very clear is how well it's researched in fact in the beginning of the book it it lists like the following institutions aided in our research and so i think that there are some research possibilities for students as well um there's beautiful imagery there are a lot of idiomatic expressions also dialect standards are addressed in this book good conflict lots of figurative language um so that one is super fun so those were the ones that i was going to suggest and then i got an email suggesting this one merry christmas mr mouse and one of the reasons I, I was willing to order it for two reasons. Number one, the person who recommended it is a longtime Gifted Guru insider who I trusted. But secondly, as soon as I saw who wrote and illustrated it, I was intrigued. So it's written by um, Mark and Carolyn Boehner. I don't know exactly how they pronounce it. I would say Boehner, um, but I used to live in Germany. And so sometimes I say stuff to German and people who live in the United States with German names don't say it as German as I do. One of the things that's fun about this book is it's kind of got a Where's Waldo thing because it says, readers, can you find a cat, a rabbit, and a Tyrannosaurus Rex in each painting? And there is a key on the inside of the book jacket if you want to know. So it's got this little I spy element. This is a book about like if if the borrowers, do any of you remember the borrowers? If the borrower, look at these gorgeous. <laughs> So gorgeous if the borrowers were a christmas picture book it would be this look at the illustrations i mean mark boehner is just an absolute genius an absolute genius um and so if the borrowers were mice this would be them and they are like it's this little mouse family with their 22 little mice children and they end up on christmas like sneaking some things and so look at they decorate their tree with paper clips and macaroni it's so precious so precious but i love the hidden pictures it's so fun um this book is really good for teaching style and rhyme scheme so there are good things in that um it is a the thing i like about it though is it's a gentle rhyme sometimes rhyme can be almost too strong and it gets you into a sing-songy cadence but this doesn't like here's an example once a raggedy little alley mouse heard an encouraging tale that a spot uh, that a warm spot beneath the kitchen stove had just gone up for sale so you can either read it as a rhyme or not the rhyme's not so strong that you can't and i think it's so sweet like there's like this i mean just the idea that that's how mice have real estate is that they hear that there's this warm spot and so they move in it's so sweet anyway merry christmas mr mouse last rec recommendation of the night. So I hope that you found some um, books to add to your family library or your classroom library and got some ideas about how some of your favorite stories can be used to teach standards. We don't always have to teach something that, um, uh, that it seems like it was designed to teach standards. There are standards to be found 
and in in every book so i hope that you enjoyed this i certainly did thank you for your participation in this and i appreciated the opportunity to add to my christmas book collection with adding in merry christmas mr mouse so thank you for the recommendation um i'll be doing some more episodes of this but probably not until the first of the year i agree with you teacher likes books i love holiday books absolutely love them have a whole basket full of them this is not all of my holiday books by a long shot i absolutely love them and there are lots of others it's just these are the ones that i feel belong in everyone's library these are the ones i feel like are absolutely worth having hands down any child would love them any teacher could make good use of them so thank you so much for being with me tonight oh lindsay says my library hold list is filling up you know lindsay that is such a good um comment to make because it's a really good idea to check a book out from the library before you purchase it because um it, just because we like a book or i like a book doesn't mean our kids are gonna like it or if you're teaching, you may not want to buy it. You may just want to use it um, while you are, you know, just use it and then return it. So yeah, the, the library, I'm such a huge fan of the library. So thank you so much. You know what? Let me say something about Mark Boehner. Mark Boehner, I'm going to share this book in another time. But Mark Boehner, who did this Merry Christmas, Mr. Mouse, he wrote a book called Harvey Potter's Balloon Farm that has been one of my top five favorite picture books of all time. Um, his illustrations are fantastic if you can ever get that. Yeah, Teacher Likes Book says, reserve them now before the holidays. You're so right, those, those books will go. You know, also though, if you have like um, a tablet and you have the Kindle app, you can get some of these, um, you know, you can borrow the ebook version of them, not the same. But not the same experience at all, but it is another opportunity. So thank you again so much for tonight, for joining me. I appreciate it so much. And I hope that you all have wonderful holidays. I'll be back to doing more live streams. I may do one in December. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but if not, then in January. I did put, I'll put it in the Facebook, um, I'll post it in Facebook tomorrow. But today in the YouTube comments below here, are links to all the books and also um, another list of my Christmas favorites, some of these and some other Christmas books I recommend, and also where you can get the audio files of me reading books. And um, I think I'll go in and add like where the, you can watch me read the Christmas Day in the morning and watch the classes of that and Gift of the Magi. So if you have a class, that would make like a really nice substitute lesson plan. Um, and just watch Mrs. Van Gammer teach about this book. Um, and um, what was the other thing? Oh, and if you've missed any of the other live streams about children's picture books, go find them. They are all there, not just picture books, but chapter books. So thank you so much. And Teacher Loves Books, please say hi to Mark for me. Um, and I will talk with you guys later. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And if I don't see you before Christmas, I hope that your holidays, whether you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever you celebrate, are truly wonderful. And a happy Thanksgiving to all of you.